Thank you so much, uh, Quickshot. Um, I'm joined here by Prolly to break down that game. Very interesting, very confident coming out of Febivin. And you guys are a team that play a lot about dragons and about dragon control. And he said, we knew we could get up, give up some dragons. And in the end, they actually gave up four, but still managed to win. What do you think of that philosophy? Um, that was actually one that we had for a really long time. If you watched our first like three weeks, we weren't really good at dragon at all. That's like a recent like improvement with the team. So when you want to do this, giving up drakes, you want to either trade for like turrets on the other side of the map, or you want to just farm up because you have a better scaling like team. The like double-edged sword of that is like, yeah, we'll get to late game, but at the same time, yeah, they'll get to late game drakes as well. So it it becomes a ticking time bomb to where okay, we can't farm anymore, we actually have to fight for this Drake. So it really is like a unseen pressure, I guess. You don't really know it hurts until you listen to the comms and everyone's going, oh my god, they're going for five Drakes. Like, we, we gotta stop them. Yeah, and also paired with the fact that, again, Fnatic didn't have the best early game. What do you attribute it to? I think that's just, I think that was CW. They initiated the lane swap, and I think that was really good against Fnatic because it avoided, you know, the Huni rain over, like, get Huni rolling kind of thing. And at the same time, they also picked Morgana, who's, mm -hmm. you know, like, glorious in a 2v1. So I think CW just played the early game really well. And you could see Fnatic's mid game was, like, kind of shaky. You know, the game went, you know, to either side. Because, yeah, Fnatic's not used to not having that early game lead on, like, Huni where he can just rumble and kill people. Like, he got Haunting Guys and Needlessly Large Rod and skipped the double pin, which is normally, like, Rumble's early power spike. So their fights for a while were kind of iffy because they're not used to you know not having that power early. And a central element in those, we saw a Zillion pick here coming out, but I didn't really see it used to much effectiveness uh, by Unlimited. Yeah, I think it was actually just a mechanical misplay on Unlimited's part. Like I think his positioning was a bit off, and the communication on Zillion ult is really hard to get through. Like telling your team go die is not. <laughs> a thing you never say that unless yeah. you have Zillion. So yeah. I could see him like you know ult Young Buck and say like Young Buck go die go die and Young Buck's like Nah I'm leaving. You're not catching me no. Yeah so into my it's really hard to kind of get used to that thing. Mm -hmm. Like it does take a lot of practice to get there. What do we take away from this uh, in terms of Fnatic? We saw that sometimes they're vulnerable in the early game and it happened again. Surely that's going to come and bite them in the back later on. Yeah I think this is like. I almost feel like it's Fnatic being stubborn and going like, oh, we can play all these other comps. But I don't see the point in doing that. Like, mm -hmm. where's the strength when you were, like, spreading yourself a bit too thin, you know? They're losing early game with this comp, and they did that in the last two games. Like, why are you losing early game just so you can have, like, a nice comp? Like, there are other comps with, you know, Ringar, Rumble, like, Zed. Like, those were great comps, and they would win early game with it. Like, that's so much easier than this lose early and win late kind of style. I, I almost for. feel like we kept saying, oh, my God, that they only play one style, though they play it well, and they might have listened. I mean, I don't want to say that. Something very interesting at the end of the game I just want to touch on is that we saw, so the Copenhagen Wolves lost this game, yet they were in a huddle, and then just sort of, like, talking them up and giving them a little pep talk. Fnatic won this game, and we saw Daylor immediately between Yellow Star and Steelback giving them some kind of, of pointers of how the game went. I think that's very interesting. What what do you prefer? I don't know. I think that's honestly like what a coach should do in a winning situation and a losing situation. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, if you're losing, you got to bring the guys up. They have to understand that that was one game. Like we can still win this thing. Like it's not over yet. And then as the winning side coach, you have to be like, look at all this stuff we did wrong. Like we got to fix this. We got to get better. Yeah. So I think it was just showing both coaches doing the right thing at the right time. All right. Very uh <laughs> nice. Before we take a break, let's hear from you guys at home. Earlier, we asked you to send in your questions for the coaches of the European LCS by tweeting with the hashtag AskACoach. Now, probably it looks like you're in the hot seat, so we're going to have you answer some questions. And the fans want to know, first up from at Faith Alamore, writes, if you had to pick another LCS team to coach for for a week, who would it be and why? DSM. <laughs> no, all right. Um, but really, <sighs> who would I? I think SK would actually be really fun to coach because if you watch how their early game is, it really is every lane just goes super ham, and that would be really fun to like get behind and just to hear how they communicate. Like, do they tell each other like, "I'm killing this guy's turrets," like high five, me too, buddy. Yeah. Like, how are they talking to each other? Like, I would really like to know that because that's kind of a style I would like to adapt in a way like you know like consistent pressure all along the map. So I'd kind of like to hear their side like how they communicate and do it, or is it just everyone? you know, likes to play that way and it works. If you coach them, you would jump up in the standings one as well. 
for now. That is true. And the second one is from at the Madman Aiden asks, how do you tell a player he or she is underperforming without hurting them and getting them to improve? Hmm. Well, it's almost like if you criticize someone, it's like natural for them to be defensive. Mm -hmm. You know, like you're doing that wrong. It's like, nah. But if you sit there and you kind of like talk to them and be like, do you think this was right? Like, would this be better? And like kind of you make a think tank with them, then they can kind of like learn what's wrong and right and kind of, they'll also learn the ability to like, you know, critically think and fix their own mistakes. Yeah. So I think it's not like tell them they're wrong, but kind of, you know, s make them see that if they're wrong or right kind of thing, explain the reasoning. All right. I like that. It's just a think tank. That was cool. One well, last point was sent in by at Cam's 7 who wants to know, can we discuss all these mid Ezreal picks? And we saw it in this game again. It worked out this time, but double AD, always risky. Yes. Uh, Ezreal mid is like super fun. I think it's probably the biggest reason. But outside of that, uh, Riot has been destroying a lot of mid laners. Like that whole DFG being gone uh, actually made Ezreal a lot better. And then in this game, it was against LeBlanc, which is a really good matchup for Ezreal. Because, you know, LeBlanc cues you, and then you E as she Ws in. And now you out-traded the LeBlanc. Mm -hmm. So it was just a good matchup for Ezreal. And then overall, he's pretty safe. And like Fabivan said, the Muramana Trinity Force basically builds at the same time and spikes at like 22, 25 minutes. And that's just like so much power. So it's like, it's a good feeling like to have that pokey champion. All right, so we might be seeing it a lot more. Thank you for tweeting those in. Keep sending your questions at LL Esports with the hashtag Ask a Coach, and we'll answer a few more later in the day. Coming up next in just a few minutes is a clash between two teams of LCS veterans that will put Element's new roster really to the test. We'll be back to cover all the action in just three and a half. How about a little Fnatic versus Copenhagen Wolves starting right now? Takes him down and rain over, isolated after the fact. Throw down the equalizer, but there are way too many members of the Wolves here. They're gonna pull Yellow Star back. Will they throw him back in? Yes, they do, but steal back. He's going down and freeze. Cash is in big. 2K, 2K, 2K. Okay, okay. 2K, 2K, no, 2K. No, no, go, go, go. Kill, Kill them all. Go. Kill, Kill them all. Kill them all. Go. Kill them. Drum and drum and drum and drum. Nice. But all of a sudden, Airwalks and Soren are there. The Assault and Battery on the steal back. The Whirling Death comes through. Airwalks going down, but they've got the Grunner Shift on him. Soren is actually going to fall. GG comes in. Fnatic take the win.